A proposal by OECS tourism ministers in the making on the cost of regional travel. Nurses reminded that disciplinary action for breaching code of conduct is likely and plans are foot for a new public order act. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details coming up. Welcome back. First up, OECS tourism ministers are planning a proposal to their finance ministers for the reduction of airfare taxes. The cost of travel and facilitating travel regionally were among topics discussed at the third OECS Council of Ministers meeting on tourism matters in Antigua last month. Tourism Minister Senator Robert Tong attended the April 21st meeting. Access, that was one of the other major issues because Dominica is not the only country that suffers from, from access issues as it relates to even, even to, um, to Liat. Um, you know that there are certain issues in terms of when you fly from one island to the next and you have to go through um, the, all the different checks. So some of the initiatives is to actually try to reduce those um, challenges to make it easier once you check into one country you don't have to go through all these um, other issues. Tong says a study on the cost of travel would be necessary to guide tourism minister's proposal. Um, there were issues in terms of the cost of travel and the cost of um, taxes on, the, on those tickets. So there's actually um, recommendations that we are making towards the, the finance ministers to see how we can get those taxes reduced. But obviously a proper study would have to be done to properly inform the, the various ministers. A regional approach to addressing the Zika virus and its implications for the tourism sector was also part of the meeting's agenda. Secretary General of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Hugh Riley, and Director General of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, Frank Comito, were among observers at the OECS meeting. Stern advice coming from the Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Health, Helen Royer, to nurses to pull up their socks and follow order. Nurses' improper attitude and lack of devotion to the job came under scrutiny at a nurses' educational symposium on Wednesday as part of Nurses' Week. Sessions in professional conduct, customer service and mentoring and coaching were delivered to the nurses at that activity. Roye says while she is aware some nurses are trying hard to maintain the standard of the profession, she is unimpressed with the uncomplimentary remarks by nurses to patients. So the, the type of things you hear sometimes from clients, it is just not nice. So I make a few little excuses for you all. You know, sometimes they may be under stress, maybe they didn't meet that. But we know when we come down to the nitty gritty of things, we need to change. When people are behaving in certain ways, it's not because they are really having an issue with you. You just need to relax, just listen. You cannot answer everybody who speaks to you because you're a professional. The minister is, is so supportive of the issues and the things that we, we want to change. And he has been trying, trying to get extra positions, medical positions. And I mean, some kind of transformation is taking place. But where we need the change is in your heart the customer service that you'll be, be spoken to about. In other top stories, nurses are being warned that they can face the consequences of disciplinary action if they breach the profession's code of conduct. The General Nursing Council regulates the nursing service and there are professional codes of conduct that nurses have to adhere to. Principal Nursing Officer Cesarina Ferrell says disciplinary procedures are in place for nurses who commit medical errors, breach confidentiality, and display rudeness to patients. Persons um, normally complain to supervisors, but in terms of disciplinary process, where there is the Public Service Commission as well as the Nursing Council, every complaint that we receive, we address it. Is a suspension a possible um, disciplinary action? Well that would be that would be left to when there's an investigation uh, if it gets to the level of the um, Public Service Commission or so as because um, at the level of nursing supervisors we would not suspend staff, we cannot um, suspend staff but we can we can um, monitor their behavior we can caution them speak to them and when we have done what it is we have to do if 
continues, then further action will be taken, further action. So it is referred to the permanent secretary. Farrell says complaints must be recorded to enable disciplinary action to be taken against a nurse. She is encouraging nurses supervisors to help in documenting complaints from patients. One of the issues in small um, communities like ours, small countries like ours, is that everybody knows everybody. And um, you find very frequently persons are afraid to, you know, to, to write. You know that a lot of persons are afraid. So persons may complain, um, but even persons from the, from the public, they, they may complain, but not many persons are willing to, to um, document complaints. So you hear persons talking about issues and talking about um, incidents, but um, you ask them to put it in writing and not many persons, and even when they put it in writing, they will tell you, please, I don't want anybody to lose their job, I just want you to, to speak to the person, or, you know, I just want to see some improvement. 20 local nurses are now better equipped to help prospective nurses from around the region be abreast on current health issues. This follows an item writing course facilitated by an official of the Caribbean Examination Council. The workshop trained senior nurses and tutors of the State College's nursing program to prepare items or exam questions for the regional exams for nurse registration administered by CXC. Yeah, well, the exams have been ongoing since 1993, but you know, you have to replenish the bank or else you run out of, of, of test items over time. So, yeah, and um, with new and emerging con disease conditions and so coming on board, we must have items which are relevant to the trends in, in, in health and, and nursing. Student nurses enrolled in the nursing program of the Dominica State College stand to benefit from the outcome of this workshop. The nursing program is under the Faculty of Health Sciences, so the, the tutors, the, the persons who, who teach in the, in the program must participate in that because they can use the skills also to, to um, develop their own local examinations, you know, but um, the regional exam is, an, is a legal exam, that's what registers nurses to practice in the country. So even if they graduate from the, from the state college, they still have to write the regional exam. The, the exam reflects the competencies that have been taught in the, in the program. The four-day item writing course came to an end just ahead of Nurses Week, which runs from the 9th to the 14th of May. The theme for Nurses Week this year is Nurses, a Force for Change, Improving Health Systems Resilience. You're watching Channel 5 News, highlights of the Sajiko Visionaries Challenge and more when we return. Thanks for staying with us. On Thursday, members of the media were given the opportunity to tour Domlex Hydro Station facilities in the Roseau Valley area with a view to promote public understanding of the company's operations. Andrea Louis has this report. We are at the start of the Clark River intake where Domlek took media personnel on a tour of the pipeline to see what damage was caused during Tropical Storm Erica and restoration works thus far. In this area is where we had um, most of our damages. Uh, this pipeline, this whole section of pipeline was damaged, it was shifted and a good section of it got below here. If you look up below, above, you'll see um, the remnants of where the slide already land slippage came from. And we had to clear the area first of all, um, regain the, the, um, the grid, and then reconstruct the pipeline, which allowed us to increase our capacity, increase our output from the loader power station, which had a cascading effect on the rest of the output downstream. The team of media and Domlek personnel made it up to the Clark River intake, the top intake for Domlek. Water from this intake then goes via pipeline to the freshwater lake and then onto Loda in a cascade effect. The main impact to this intake caused during Tropical Storm Erica was the deposition of silt through landslide. We spent many a day and resources getting this cleaned out and if you notice there is a small island there and what has happened is that during the rains that, we've ha that we have been experiencing, you have more silt coming down from the landslide upstream. And I'm afraid that is going to continue until you have all the silt from the stream.
come into the structure and then we extract it from here to make sure that we do not have sand and sediment. The tour of Domlex Hydro Facilities also took us to the freshwater lake. From there the water enters the pipeline and runs for about three kilometers to the loader power station. Right? And from there it goes into the Trafalgar balancing tank. And this object they're painted in red is actually an air release valve. When the pipe is emptied, you have air entering the pipe. So when the pipe is refilled, you have the air being released through this um, component here. From here, the water heads down to the loader power station. The main components in here, we have a turbine, a water turbine, which is connected to a generator. We have what we call the 2.2 kV switchgear bus bar and the 11 kV bus bar and we have an auxiliary equipment which is a lube oil lubricating and oil cooling unit and a hydraulic governor and we also have digital components we have also have a digital governor and also other components which transfer the monitoring and control system to Trafalgar and then to Fonkuli. The media tour of Domlex Hydro Facilities also brought us to the Padu Headworks. This area is among those that were most severely affected during Tropical Storm Erica. All this section here by the tree roots which are airborne now, all that was land, okay? And the river wiped all this away and also threatened our infrastructure, okay? Of course, we have plans afoot to do some um, renovation or some reconstruction to the system, okay, to make sure that we can protect it from the river in the future. This is where we have come to the end of our media tour of Domlex Hydropower Stations. I am Andrea Lee reporting for Channel 5 News. Back to you, Idona. In more news, new legislation is being drafted to replace the existing riot and public order acts. These acts provide the legal basis for public processions and meetings in public places, including protests and demonstrations. The Attorney General said he expects the Public Order Bill will come through shortly. Uh, the Public Order Act that is envisaged is one which would, uh, as it were, bring together elements of both the Riot Act and the Public Order Act uh, under one uh, act uh, and more adequately cover uh, the relevant situations, introducing some new uh, statutory uh, offences, uh, including riot, violent disorder, a free, and a number of others. That that is a is a bill which is uh, being is has there's a draft, but of course it's a, a bill that has to make its way uh, through cabinet and be approved by cabinet before it um, gets uh, out into the. the uh, the public arena. Last year, residents of Salisbury were charged under the Riot Act for unlawfully assembling following protests in that community concerning poor farm access and village roads. The St. Martin's Secondary School's solution to curbing the spread of Zika has landed them the winning position of the Sajiko Visionaries Challenge. This is the third consecutive year the St. Martin's Secondary School is winning the competition. The school's team project, titled Mosquito Buster, also got awards for Best Innovation, Best Presentation, Best Plan and Project Design, and Best Use of STEM. The Sajiko Visionaries competition challenges students to think of innovative ways using science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM to help reduce a particular problem in their environment through an effective and sustainable design. Many times we hear such negative things about children and many times bad news carries very fast. I hope that all the videos that have been circulating recently, that they will circulate all the science projects today and it will go viral. That's what we want to see going viral, the positive things that happen in Dominica. To our youth, I want to, to continue to encourage you but when you're applying to universities, you can put that you were a participant in the Surgical Visioners Challenge. And if you want a reference from me, I will be quite willing to give it. Because one of the things that universities look at 
is your ability to work as a team member and your ability to have vision. The Caribbean Science Foundation and Caribbean Examinations Council partnered with Sajiko to organize the competition. Nine secondary schools participated in this year's challenge. All in all, I think the judges agree that the competition this year was of a very high standard. The presentations, the ideas, they were very creative for the most part. Quite a few of the projects were related to Tropical Storm Erica and how we can improve um, some of the environmental conditions in the long run as a result of what occurred after the tropical storm. Also, a lot of people are very aware of the threat of the Zika virus. And so we saw that a lot of the presentations, a lot of the projects looked for innovative and creative and sustainable ways in which to address Zika, the threat of Zika in Dominica. The award for best community and school involvement went to the Dominica Grammar School with its Math Helper 101 project. The Goodwill Secondary School's Solar AC Unit got the prize for most relevant to sustainable Caribbean communities. Second runner-up position went to Dominica Grammar School for Math Helper 101. While Convent High School's Vegetable Garden got second place in this year's competition. In related news, the Ministry of Education continues to explore ways to build students' interest in technology. Education Minister Peter Seger says the Sajikor Visionaries Challenge is assisting the ministry in its endeavor to keep students up to date with changing technologies. The Ministry of Education is fully supportive of such initiatives because really and truly they complement the work that we are doing at the ministerial level to build interest in STEM. In fact, over the last year, we have been focused on preparing our students to take advantage of technology within their classrooms. And our hope is to build students' interest in ways that technology can, in fact, assist their learning. And so the One Tablet Per Child initiative has certainly enhanced teaching and learning with our classrooms. And I'm really happy this afternoon to see how the students have integrated the use of the tablets in their projects here. Kenny Williams is up next with Sports Highlights. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. First up in sports, sports philanthropist Billy Doctorow says he believes the corporate community could lend a hand in making government's plan of establishing a local gym a reality. He says the Windsor Park would be an ideal place to have it set up. As, as the Prime Minister, I don't think the government should, should go into trying to run a gym, but I suppose they, they will have, probably have to offer it to, um, to someone, probably in, 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 in the corporate um, as a corporate citizen, we we'll probably take it up. Personally, I would focus is probably establishing a gym at the at possibly at the Windsor Park. We have the national associations and other persons could um, the national association and as well as national teams could 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 utilize that gym in the preparation for tournaments and in their leagues and so. He says the athletes' use of a gym could help improve the quality of their performances. Where we fall short in many cases in in our preparation is phys physical preparation. Uh, we see our, our teams um, doing very well at, um, in the first half of a game. You know, and you can look at all sports, you know, football, cricket, basketball, netball. In the first three quarters of a game, our team do well, but at the, at the last third or the last quarter, we fall short because many times we are not physically fit. So I think a, a gym to, to focus on um, the, 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 the national team's preparations for tournaments, I think that's an excellent idea. Moving over to Thibault now, where one man believes that games at the playing field might be suspended for some time until the pest problem there has been resolved. Recently, the playing field there has seen a rapid increase of caterpillars that is of concern to users of the field. 
Well, my advice to the Tibo community is that to see um, see how they can get rid of that before any spots, because we're always having spots on our field. You know, Tibo is a sports a, a, a sports little community where we're always having spots on weekends. No, we cannot play sports on that. So we 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 still want to know that what can the government or the health personnel and them or the environmental people can do to help us to see how they can get rid of that so that our grass can grow back green and nice. Paul says he wouldn't encourage people to frequent the playing field for fear that the insects would affect other sports grounds. I would not advise any anybody to go and play in that in that in that in that um, grass at the time because we don't know what is the next step that the caterpillars if it climb on our pants unknowing then what is the next step that's going to happen? Meantime, groundsman at the Windsor Park, Matthew Talbot, says the pest problem at Tibo can be resolved in a short space of time. Well, first of all, I don't think there's no danger because those things, I don't think they have no other thing carrying, you know. So I think people could continue using it, but just have to keep on spraying, you know. Get the fast stack here, fast stack here we just use in the stadium so they could use it other places, you know. Like what we used to get rid of the ants and the different beetles and things they have in the place. Still in sports, following the death of Tony Cozier, retired international cricket umpire Billy Dockdrove spoke of his memories of the renowned cricket commentator. Dockdrove says it's unfortunate that Cozier did not live to see his dream of West Indies cricket return to its glory days. He was, um, he was very passionate about, about West Indies cricket because he really wanted to see West Indies cricket um, regain its, its, its position of dominance in, in, world, in world cricket. Um, but un unfortunately, um, he was gone before the time. Um, but but he was he was a person I said he was very forthright. He was um, he will, he and I developed a, a fairly close and um, professional relationship. Even though I say it myself, he was at initially initially he was one of my one of my biggest critics, but subsequently became one of my staunchest supporters. Meantime, cricket commentator Joseph Thomas says he owes part of his achievements in cricket commentary to the deceased. My, my greatest memory of, of Tony Cozia was having the opportunity to sit by him at Beau Seju. And I, when I say sit by him, I mean sit side by side and listen to the ease, the virtual, his virtual composure of how he delivered, um, how he described the game, how he described what went on there. You know, I, I patterned a lot on his way, his style, the, the, the comp and I loved his composure. I, he, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't the sort of guy who would raise his voice extraordinarily at anything. In football, three games are scheduled in the All-Island League on Friday. Here is Gerald George with the details. Friday, Maosuka Strikers will come up against Maxroy Classics Fokole at 5 p.m. to be followed by ACS Tarish United versus Times Ballers Sideman Middleham United at 7 p.m. And at the Benjamin Park, Kalibishi will battle Nemesis United at 6 p.m. Meantime, PHL Secondary and Dominica Grammar School registered wins in the DFA Secondary Schools Girls Football Championships on Wednesday. PHL Secondary defeated Wesley High School two goals to nil. Brittany Thomas and Naya Victorine scored for PCSS. In the second game, Dominica Grammar School also had a 2 0 win when they defeated Portsmouth Secondary. Rachel Serafina and Janelia Bells scored for DGS. Meantime in action from the 2016 First Domestic Insurance Under-15 Cricket Championships on Wednesday. Portsmouth Secondary batted first and scored 28 for 4 in 9 overs when the rains came. Shama Felicite assisted with 9. For Casabru Secondary, Romeo Burton took 3 for 0 and Dion Williams 1 for 10. CBSS came first in their zone and will host Dominica Grammar School in Casabru on Tuesday. In basketball, four matches are on the cards in the 2016 Flow DABA League on Friday. At Portsmouth, Kelva Daru Hurricanes will take on Inter School at 7 to be followed by Paybush Snipers versus Police Sports Club. Meantime, at Massac, Justina Charles Thunderers will do battle with D Tread Blazers in a Division 1 match at 7, while at 9, Fast Cash Prowlers and Elijah Law Chambers Thunderers will take to the court for play. Meantime, in the primary school's basketball festival on Wednesday, rain affected play. However, Portsmouth Secondary came in first, Dominica Grammar School second, and Northeast Comprehensive third. On the international cricket scene, Delhi Daredevils defeated Sunrisers Hyderabad by seven wickets in the Indian Premier League on Thursday. Hyderabad batted first and scored 146 for eight. David Warner had a game high of 46. Shikhar Darwan scored 34. Daredevils in reply posted 150 for three. 
Quinton de Kock added 44 from 31 balls, Arpant 39 not out, and Sanju Samson 34 not out. That's all the sports for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. And the weather report is next. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. Infrared satellite imagery today showed multi-layered clouds across the Eastern Caribbean. Mostly cloudy skies were observed across Dominica today. Radar imagery indicated scattered showers across the southern portion of the island chain. The weather for tonight, partly cloudy with scattered showers. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with scattered showers mainly during the afternoon period. Seas tomorrow moderate in open water with waves peaking up to 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise a caution. Looking ahead for the next three days, weak and stable conditions and lingering moisture will result in mostly cloudy skies and scattered showers. Throughout the Caribbean tomorrow, partly cloudy, two cloudy skies and scattered showers can be expected. On the international cities forecast, rain in New York and Beijing, cloudy skies in Miami, clear skies in London, thunderstorm activity in Caracas. Sunrise tomorrow at 5.37 a.m. and sunset at 6.27 p.m. For up-to-date weather information, please visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. A proposal by OECS tourism ministers in the making on the cost of regional travel. Nurses reminded that disciplinary action for breaching code of conduct is likely and plans are foot for a new public order act. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com Remember, you can access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona Jean Baptiste. Thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.